It's a very interesting subject. The myth of India's East going beyond the divisive binaries of fact and fiction. And it's very interesting because uh, it's really Eastern conclave, one Assamese and one Odia. We'd be talking about the East in Bengal. So it's truly an Eastern convergence. I'll start with a tweet of yours. You have pinned this tweet. And you say, mythology needs to be differentiated from other types of stories, legends which are political, and fables which have moral agenda. Mythology establishes worldview and hegemony. Rational secularism is based on myth of justice and equality in Islam and Christianity. Now I have two questions. First is, in today's era, where mythology is getting mixed with history, what are the legends or political stories that disturb you the most? And secondly, you have mentioned Christianity and Islam. Does that mean that the myth of justice and equality exists only in these two religions and not in Hinduism, which is very much a big issue in current India? Um, so let's begin with the first question. I forgot. <laughs> um, your the disturbing political story or yeah, so, legend. Um, you know, people use words like culture, civilization, based on 19th century ideas. The 21st century ideas are very different. So really they have to read their more recent books, the re recent scholarship, um, you know, post-structural scholarship. Civilization words and all are used, they are very old, very colonial ideas. So when somebody uses words like civilization, I said, oh my God, the British have come back. So these are very, very old ideas. They are outdated. Nation state is a tough idea which is crumbling rapidly with the virtual space coming in, with cryptocurrency coming in, with challenging the nation state. So the new discourse is changing dramatically. And um, talking about you know, the words like justice and equality, remember Islam and Christianity are based that you live only once. So you live only once and in this one life, um, you have to do whatever you do and at the end of this one life you'll be judged by God. So God is a judge in Islam and Christianity and Judaism. So Qayamat is a very important concept. Adl, justice is a very important concept. Sistine Chapel, God is a judge. You will never find that artwork in Hindu art. God is not a judge in Hinduism. God is an accountant. So God, because you live many lives and it's based on rebirth. So there is the, there's always a balance sheet that you look at, not a legal system. So it's not based on constitution as much as um, what do you owe society? What do you owe society? What have you, um, who is a borrower? Who is a lender? Who must give? Who must receive? That's the conversation. So the, the traditional Indian model is constantly based on who is privileged, who is not. What does a privileged man do with his life? What is a person without privilege? What can he expect? Swarg, Nark, all these are based on accounting principles. They are not based on judgment today. There is no concept of Kayamat. There is no concept of judgment day in Hinduism. It's not there. But gods have become very sensitive these days. Hindu gods primarily. Uh, we just saw uh, recently the goddess Kali smoking and it's creating a huge controversy in the country and uh, goddess Kali primarily belongs to the West Bengal culture, means uh, hugely worshipped in West Bengal and Assam and Odisha also. So how do you react to these controversies? Should we chill out that uh, this is freedom of expression or we should be sensitive to our gods? See anger is political dividend, right? It's currency. Um, if I get angry, I get outraged, I win votes. So in a political vocabulary, anger is useful. Whether you're really angry or not, we even Bhagwan bhi leela karte hain. So this whole game of I'm angry with you and I'm upset with you is, helps you become powerful. You know, nowadays Natya Shastra is more important than Dharma Shastra. So, Nautanki se Rajya mil sakta hai. पहले जमाने में युद्ध करते थे आजकल हम तरफ आप इशारा कर रहे हैं सब वी हैव ब्रिलियंट एक्टर्स एवरीवेयर 
those who are crying are actors, those who are crying for justice are actors, this side, that side, everyone. So Nautanki is the big, Natya Shastra is the big theme. You have to go, I would recommend future politicians to go to drama school. Because that's what gets you the votes. You give the great speech and people will believe you. So it is Natya Shastra. It doesn't matter what you genuinely believe in, what you genuinely care for. If you get angry, you get your vote. So Navaras you should learn, Bhavishna, Natya Shastra, you know, Angika, when to bow, whom to bow to, then there is Mudra. I am tempted to ask who has the best potential among the current lot of politicians. See, I am a mythologist, so as per some people, that is false history. They don't understand the meaning of these words. Mythology is somebody's truth. Fact is everybody's truth. And fiction is nobody's truth. To study mythology, you have to accept other people's truth. If Nautanki gives you Simhasan, then you will do Nautanki. Because that's the design of democracy. Democracy says, we will vote you if you appeal to our emotion. We don't care whether you genuinely perform. It doesn't matter whether you give us jobs, whether the economy is doing well, or whether my life is better. It doesn't matter. If you make me angry, you know, play with the right emotion, I will give you power. So that's the Nautanki will come. So that's the most important skill set today. Let me come back to the East first. Uh, Political stories, as you said, legends are political stories and we have seen that there is a urgency and there is a desire to uh, create a certain kind of political stories and narrative in India and uh, which has probably historically affected certain parts of the country. We see uh, that characters are only from uh, a particular area. Even in your mythology, if we look at the, all the top characters that we know of, they are from, say, mostly from North India. Do you think that regional disparity or an uniform narrative is not a current problem but a very uh, mythological, historical problem? See, 50% of India lives in the Gangetic Plain. So most of the votes come from the Gangetic Plain. So gods also live in the Gangetic Plain. Mathura is in the Gangetic Plain, Kashi is in the Gangetic Plain, uh, Ayodhya is in the Gangetic Plain. Um, so, nobody cares for um, Kerala unless there's a controversy. I remember being in Rajputana, a Rajput state, and the Rajputs were talking about how Rajputs are not treated properly. So I asked them, so do you know about Gajapati? And they said, no, ye Gajapati kaun hote hai? So I said, Achha, to you expect me to know all the stories of Rajasthan and Rajputana, but you know nothing about Odisha. You know nothing about Gajapati. I said, have you heard of Indra Dumna? Have you heard of Prataprudra? Have you heard of Kakatiyas? Have you heard of the Pala kings, the Sena kings, the Ahoms? And he looked blank. And a few minutes before that, of course, he was talking about Hindu civilization, Hindu civilization. But Hindu civilization in their minds is Hindi civilization. And even there it is Gangetic. 50% of the votes, no sir. The rest of India don't matter. We will earn money so that they will spend the money. And that's the way the story goes. The gods are also not India. We never talk about the gods of Maharashtra, Vithala. We never talk of Srinathji. We never talk of Tirupati. We never talk of um, the rest of India, Kamakya, Vishnupur temples. We do, the rest of India is not there. So that's the big thing because when they say, Aapko Hindi nahi pata hai. So I said, Tu Marathi madhe bolna. So no, why should I speak in Marathi? I said, I am an Odia who speaks Marathi because I live in Bombay. Why should I not speak in Marathi? Why should I not speak in Odia? Why should I not speak in Bengali? Why should I not speak in Assamese? Why Hindi? I don't know which language the gods spoke. They said, Wo Bhagwan to Sanskrit bolte the. I said, Tumko kese pata? Sri Krishna to Brajbhasha bolte the. Brajbhasha bolte hai wo. 
All the poetry of Krishna is written by Chandidas, Vidyapati. Then I said, have you heard of the Tamil Krishna? Have you heard of Perumal? Nahi pata. They know nothing. Zero understanding of South, East, West. Everything is Mughal Rajput, Mughal Rajput, Mughal Rajput. And I'm like, oh God, please, thank God, Mani Ratnam is making a film on Cholas. He is making a film on Cholas, but we have just seen a movie on Prithviraj Chauhan. We have seen? India has seen. I thought the theatres went empty, no? <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> so, as you were saying that uh, injustice has been done to, kind of injustice has been done to the east or south or other regions of the country. Now we are very hopeful because textbooks are being rewritten. So, the justice will be probably done. But, but at the same time, I'll quote another tweet of yours. Uh, you were saying that uh, mythology, and this is for the next generation. So, this is in the context of next generation. Like mythology, there is no true history. True history is propaganda and false history is mythology. You, you tweeted this for the next generation. You were saying that in future, for students, this will be the truth. No, so let me clarify because there were a lot of quotes and when you write it, people... Um, so step one, I never talk of injustice because remember injustice is not an Indian concept. This concept of justice, injustice, sin, original sin, apocalypse, um, thousand years of slavery, hundred years of slavery. Chinese have the story of hundred years of slavery. Indians have the story of thousand years of slavery. These ideas are based on a biblical structure. There is no injustice in the world. Nature takes care of everything. It just sort of balances everything out. So it's the way nature is designed. But my tweet was this, that today historians are considered to be fiction writers. If you look at the history department, it's only a question of time before the history department will be headed by fiction writers. We are going in that direction, where if you're good at fiction, you could be the head of history department. Are you indicating to any particular writer, no. author? It's an idea. Ideas are far more important than people. As we know, civilization is more important, right? Shabd. So, you are genuinely telling people not to believe scholars. Panditon ki ninda ho rahi hai. Don't believe scholars, don't believe scholars, don't believe scholars. So you'll create a generation of people who don't believe scholars. And they will believe that fiction and... And I know so many people who believe fiction as history. And they ask me questions and I'm listening to them. And I'm like, Praman, Shabda Praman, Anuman. You know, Praman is a very big concept in Hinduism. If you understand ki sach kya hota hai. And it's very complex ideas. But you have to respect scholarship. But we are in a generation where fiction writing will soon be the head of history. As a mythologist, I find it amusing because mythology is somebody's truth. It's not everybody, it doesn't based on evidence. It is like whatever you say is true for you. Why do you believe in this? Why do you not believe in this? So uh, mythology does not care for fact and fiction. It doesn't care. It just says, what do you believe in? If you believe there is God, there is God. If you believe there is Hindu Rashtra, there is Hindu Rashtra. If you believe that everybody in India should speak Hindi, that's your belief. Because when I believe you, I can have a conversation with you. I don't argue because argue is fact and fiction ki dunya is vivad wali dunya. Where I am right, you are wrong. I am right, you are wrong. And jiske hat mein talwar hota hai, wo hamesha sahi hota hai. Your boss is always right. Right? Because he has the power to take away your employment. Right? We know that. I can raid your house. I can put you in jail. So whatever you say is the truth. Right? The truth is determined like that. So mythology recognizes this. Mythology recognizes the stories change over time. That Christianity today is the result of the Roman Empire. Not because of Jesus Christ. It's because the Roman emperors became Christian. So, Christian, Jesus Christ didn't create Christianity. Roman Empire created Christianity. Right? But, the, so when you realize these ideas of mythology, you realize that what are we telling the next generation? We are telling the so next generation. So, are we seeing the creation of new Hinduism in the current India? See, Roman Empire created Christianity. So, so a moment kind of Hinduism. So, well, look what happened to Christianity. Let's go to history. 
since although I'm a mythologist, I'll talk about history. Roman Empire takes Christianity in the third century. In the sixth century, Islam rises and counters it. The Roman Empire fought the Parthians. The moment Roman Empire becomes Christian, the Parthian Empire and the Middle East becomes Muslim. Then you have the Crusades. So there is a fight between the two. So they didn't become all powerful. And then the Roman Empire divides into the Eastern and the Western Roman Empire. And then the Holy Roman Empire is destroyed by Protestant fights with the Protestants and the Catholics. And the Orthodox Christians are on the West. So nothing lasts forever. Buddha said nothing lasts forever. Hindus say nothing lasts forever. Only politicians believe they last forever. I can see a prediction here. I can sense that. But um, I want to become devil's advocate. You talked about why Hindi. But we have so many regions, so many languages. Now, how would I know the history of, say, Marathas if I have to read it in Maratha, Marathi? Or, or even for the Bangla history or, or, or say, Uriya history. How would I know that? We need a common language. And English cannot be the common language in uh, India. Well, there is no common language. Look at history of India. Before, Eng you know, we want to make Hindi, which is a North Indian language. Before that, it was Farsi. English came with the court language. It's called a court language. It was English. Before that, it was Farsi. Before that, it was Sanskrit. Before that, it was Pali. So, court language has changed in India. And all age, ask yourself, 8th century, Adi Shankaracharya lived in Kerala, traveled across India. Which language did he speak? And then people will tell me, Malayalam. And I said, no, Malayalam didn't exist in the 8th century. It emerged in the 13th century. So then they say Sanskrit. I said, Sanskrit was only spoken by Brahmins. How did he talk to people on the road when he's traveling across India, when he's going from village to village to village? He has to engage with people. He is talking in the local language. He would know the local language, the many Prakrits. Like, for example, how old is Bengali? How old is Assamese? How old is Odia? I mean, if you reduce the history of India to seven days, let me teach you something very interesting. If India is a 5,000 year history, if Harappa civilization existed on Monday, then you know what happened on Saturday? The Mughal Empire came and went, the Maratha Empire came and went, the British Empire came and went, and the Republic of India is right there today. All this happened on Saturday. Harappa is on Sunday. So Monday ko kya hua, Tuesday ko kya hua, Wednesday ko kya hua, Thursday ko kya hua, Friday ko kya hua. These five days between Sunday and Saturday. In Saturday, you have your thousand years of gulami. But nobody talks about Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Vedic culture is Wednesday. We don't even know what happened on Monday. It's confusing. We have no information. We know that Vedic culture was there on Wednesday. Unless, of course, your Guruji tells you Vedic culture existed 5,000, 10,000 years ago, which dimensional Gurujis do say. Because they don't believe in time, right? Time is a cosmic idea, like civilization. But if you follow history, Harappa was on Sunday, Monday we don't know, Tuesday was Vedic civilization, Wednesday is when the Buddhism, Greek, Alexander comes, Thursday is when... Um, uh, you have got the South Indian cultures emerging. So you have this whole history of India. When you start packaging in the seven days, you realize timelines are very big. And we just have not been taught. When did Satavahans live? Do we know about Satavahans? Which language did they speak? Did they speak Tamil? No, they didn't. Which language did the you know, Kakatiyas who established Telugu culture? Only 13th century. You know, when we talk about Allahuddin Khilji and we talk, all those films which are made, Prithviraj Chauhan, what was happening in the rest of India when Prithviraj Chauhan was fighting? Do we know the Chola Empire was going from the south to the north? They have attacked Bengal at that time. The Choda Empire was very big along the eastern coast of India. In that same time, our homes were traveling from Southeast Asia to what is today Assam, 12th century, 12th century. But all the attention is on Prith Prithviraj Chauhan. Obviously, when you pay attention to Prithviraj Chauhan, rest of India is going to be forgotten. What happened in the rest of India when Prithviraj Chauhan was fighting in Delhi and Ajmer and that area? We don't know. We are not taught. Ki 12th century, mein Maharashtra mein kya hua? 
ट्वेल्थ सेंचुरी में आसाम में क्या हुआ ट्वेल्थ सेंचुरी में डू यू आई मीन हैव यू हाउ मेनी पीपल इन द गंजेटिक प्लेन नो ऑफ द पाला एम्पायर हाउ मेनी ऑफ द नो ऑफ द सेना एम्पायर बट दैट्स द फेलियर ऑफ द स्कॉलर्स एज यू सेड दैट सो यू हैड वन ग्रुप ऑफ फिक्शन राइटर्स विल रिप्लेस द स्कॉलर्स बट दैट्स व्हाट द प्रॉब्लम इज दे मिस द मिस दोस सेंचुरीज फिक्शन राइटर्स विल डू व्हाट द किंग टेल्स देम टू डू राजा का नवरत्न होता बट इवन द स्कॉलर्स डिन डू देयर जॉब बिकॉज़ दैट्स व्हाई नोबडी नोज अबाउट लासिट बर्फुकन अल्टीमेटली इट डिपेंड्स ऑन हु पेज योर बिल्स अल्टीमेटली इट कम्स डाउन टू द पैसा कौन देता है हु कैन पुट यू इन जेल and who can pay your take away your food in the house so you know the very famous thing the poet says that if you have to pay all the kings they would go to kings yagya valkya would go to janak and he would say why did he go to janak he didn't want to go to janak but janak says mere paas gaay hai i have cows if you impress me i will give you cows so i have to impress the king to get the cows and the king controls all the cows if king controls all the cows so there's no objectivity see mythology is somebody's truth the world of mythology doesn't value objectivity it only values subjectivity and understands the various political forces that work towards creating a narrative and a story the economic forces the political forces such kuch nahi hai such is such is the katha so ramayan is told as a katha lavakusha is telling the story of ramayan to ram I mean, Ram listens to it. His first statement: "Kiske baare mein baat kar rahe ho?" And they say, "No, it is your biography." He said, "I don't believe it. This doesn't seem to be my life. Which story are you telling me?" He doesn't even recognize his own children telling him the story because his children live in the forest. So the Ramayana was first narrated to Ram by Lavakush. The first Mahabharat was narrated when Janmajaya is killing the snakes. he is massacring the snakes because he said the snakes killed my father and the mahabharat is told to tell but you know what your father burnt the forests where the snakes lived stories are told not to for justice stories are told to calm you down and to tell you you don't matter that is the purpose of good storytelling ki no king matters नो पोएट मैटर्स इन इन्फिनिटी अनंत में हम सब शून्य है दैट इज द पर्पज ऑफ स्कॉलरशिप वेन यू रीड द हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडिया वेन यू रीड द माइथोलॉजी रामायण महाभारत लास्ट में श्री राम जल समाधि लेते हैं ना आर यू इंडिकेटिंग इन ए वे दैट दैट स्कॉलरशिप हैज एन एग्जिस्टेड इन इंडिया बिकॉज यू सेट दैट इट ओनली थिंग दैट मैटर्स हु पेज योर बिल्स सो वट एवर हिस्ट्री यू यर स्टडिंग और सींग टिल नाउ ऑल दिस इज paid history it's called always you know when you read uh, the scriptures they'll always ask tumhara rin kon bharta hai you should always i always tell people if i want to understand you i don't just believe your autobiography i will also read the circumstances in which you lived if you want to understand swami vivekanand you don't just read what swami vivekanand has written you have to understand swami vivekanand lived in the colonial era he lived before harappa was discovered he came from an educated affluent bengali family and therefore had access to education when you read the history of swami vivekanand you understand his writings that is good scholarship when you read रामायण यू हैव व्हेन वाज रामायण पुट डाउन इन राइटिंग व्हेन वाज वाज वाई डू दे से त्रेता युग में लिखा गया था ये द्वापर युग में लिखा गया था दे आर ट्राइंग टू टेल यू लुक एट द कॉन्टेक्स्ट लुक एट द कॉन्टेक्स्ट बिकॉज इफ यू डोंट अप्रिशिएट द कॉन्टेक्स्ट देन यू से वॉट एवर इज टोल्ड इज अ ट्रूथ वेन समी सेज दर ओनली वन गॉड आई सेट हु टेल्स दिस ओ हु आर दीज पीपल वेर डू दे कम फ्रॉम समबडी सेज देर आर मेनी गॉड्स हु आर दीज पीपल वेर आर दे कमिंग फ्रॉम वेन समी सेज दर इज नो गॉड in most cases either he is very rich or very poor one says he is too arrogant and says there is no god and the poor is so frustrated he says there is no god you have to understand the context in which it is told har kahani ka ek context hota hai isliye bhagwan ke murti mein bhi ek frame dala jata hai jisko medho bolte hain odia mein durga statue is not placed alone na uske piche ek background hota hai aur uske upar ek murti hoti hai if you look carefully in 
when you look at durga statue behind her there is a little shivji ka statue tiny statue if you go to shiva temple on top of shiva there is always an image of a kirti mukha who is with his tongue sticking out wo jeeb aisa nikal ke rakha karke like kali why saying that oh you think you are very smart i know the truth i know the truth you know talking about truth and if you have time i would like since the mythology session let me tell you a story of truth and fact and fiction and everybody's truth to entertain the audience because you know even i think maybe if i do good notanki i'll get votes so are you intending to go to politics <laughs> so let me tell you a story and let us so you know mahabharat yudh ke baad after mahabharat yudh ke pashchat ek uh, bhim aur arjun ke beech mein ladai ho jati hai so the pandavas have won and bhim and arjun start fighting with each other and bhim uh, tells that i am the greatest warrior in the world and arjun says i am the greatest warrior in the world main dhanurdhar hu maine sabse yuddh jeeta hai and uh, bhim says that i have killed all the kauravas main uh, you know gadadhar hu i am the greatest so this krishna they go to krishna and you know justice ke liye krishna ke paas jate hain krishna says dekho i was always with arjun so my view is biased because main rath mein tha to mera bias hai तो तुम जाओ उस पहाड़ के ऊपर जाओ उस पहाड़ के ऊपर एक पेड़ है उस पेड़ के ऊपर एक सर है ही कैन सी द बैटल फ्रॉम अ डिफरेंट वेंटेज पॉइंट सो ही विल बी ऑब्जेक्टिव ही विल नॉट बी बायस्ड तो थर्ड पार्टी को पास जाओ तो दोनों भाई जाते हैं पहाड़ के ऊपर पेड़ के पास उस सर को देखते हैं दे लुक एट दिस एंड दे लुक एट दिस एंड दे आस्क हिम दट प्लीज टेल हु इज ग्रेटर अर्जुन इज ग्रेटर और भीम इज ग्रेटर एंड देन देड लुक्स एट दम एंड सेज Um, who is arjun who is bhim then they say don't you know we are the great warriors we are the pandavas he says who are the pandavas he says what war have you been seeing you foolish fellow whole day you were looking at the war didn't you see the pandavas were fighting the kauravas the good dharma humne sthapna ki he says i am sorry i did not see any pandavas kauravas arjun or krishna vrishna kuch nahi dekha maine i just saw stupid kings fighting each other over land I have seen this land before the kings came. I will see the land after the kings came. बीच में कुछ राजा आए बेवकूफ के जैसे लड़ रहे थे उसको democracy बोल रहे थे उसके बाद नया राज्य आया जमीन तो जमीन रहेगी So सनातन के सामने आपका मूल्य कुछ नहीं है But you want to be the great hero. Photo आएगा आपका Nobel Prize मिलेगा But किसको किसी को भी फिर भी आप किस कोई तो मन में है आपके हम और आप वाई शुड यू नॉट गेट द नोबेल प्राइज वाई शुड आई नॉट गेट द नोबेल प्राइज इक्वालिटी रिमेंबर एंड जस्टिस बट दिस इज द स्टोरी ऑफ हिंदू यू वॉन्ट टॉक अबाउट हिंदू सिविलाइजेशन हिंदू सिविलाइजेशन इज अबाउट वे गॉड इज इन्फिनिटी अनंत अनंत के सामने सब शून्य है तो ये गुस्सा ये माया की दुनिया वो सिंहासन मिल जाएगा तलवार मिल जाएगा पैसा मिल जाएगा यू नो I always tell people who is a rich person the person who gives you money others are not rich if person if koi aapko paisa if you don't give me money you are not rich if the richest man or not doesn't give me money he is not rich you are rich only when you give me money who is a powerful person who gives you power gareeb aadmi tumse power leta hai na so be very clear in your head when you meet rich and powerful people ki they are wanting your wealth and your power we are running out of time my last question and please give it direct answer you are a mythology so who is your favorite character in mythology and in indian political context in the current political context who do you think most resembles to that character so my favorite character is you know um ganesha's rat usko koi usko dekhta nahi hai na because वो बिचारी एक यू नो मराठी मध्य तला उंदीर मनता सिंस वी आर अ मल्टी लिंग्वेल कंट्री वी शुड टॉक इन डिफरेंट लैंग्वेजेस सो चूहा इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू मी बिकॉज चूहा आपका धन हमेशा चुराएगा एंड फॉर मी दैट चूहा इज वंडरफुल इट रिमाइंड्स मी ऑफ इलेक्शन बॉन्ड्स आई आस्क फॉर ए इंडिविजुअल नो i you are playing safe not really you know i don't want a tax raid okay you don't want a tax raid i earn a lot of money and listening. i don't want to be in jail i want like my security i like my life abhi kyu padhna hai 
जिस राजा का तलवार हम देखते हैं राजा को थोड़ी ना देखते हैं तो राजा आते जाते हैं तलवार हमेशा रहता है तो सो यू वांट टू बी ऑन द राइट साइड ऑफ द राजा आई वांट टू बी अलाइव आई लाइक बीइंग अलाइव डू यू हैव अ प्रॉब्लम विद दैट एब्सोल्युटली नॉट थैंक यू विद ऑन दैट नोट वी वुड लाइक टू कंक्लूड दिस सेशन इट वाज वंडरफुल हैविंग यू हियर एंड सच अ intense but delightful conversation thank you thank so you much. mr panai